Hello. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Paul Tranny here with the one and only Alexandria <laughs> of Alexandria's Lens. And uh, we're happy to be here. Yeah. And we're happy you're here. Fernando, Jan Eric, Vivian, Jordan. And if it's your first time joining us, we would love to give you a warm welcome and a virtual hug. So. Uh, yeah, we have a, a lot going on. This is day two. You yeah, day of, two. One of your gorgeous images behind us, <laughs> right? And that's you. Yeah, there that is are. me. Just whipping your hair back and forth <laughs> in that picture. Colorado so, gets a lot of wind too, so that helps. It does. It yeah. Gets, it gets a lot, a lot of, a uh, lot, lot of wind. So yeah. All right. Thank you. Nice sweater. Appreciate it. It's very Colorado, very Colorado today. Yeah, um, you blend well. I know, I'm, I'm working with the environment here. Um, but yeah, I'm ready to cut to your screen if you want to. Yeah. We could just admire it and just take our time. So yesterday I was working on the cloud shot, which I will go back to. But um, right now I just wanted to kind of show all the layers I have going on here. We could use some of that magic right about now. <laughs> Is that up? That's called a Well, Patronus. the Patronus itself, the actual magical spell itself, took about 50 layers and three to four hours, and I don't have that PSD with me. Wow. And I'm actually kind of considering doing a tutorial on it. So um, stay tuned on my page for that because uh, I am thinking about doing that. But I don't actually have the PSD with me. But I do have the PSD of this actual image. And, and when you when you say your page, you, you kind of refer to uh, Instagram? Yeah, my Instagram page. I'm just going to switch over. Shout out to your Instagram, which I feel like this has just been one big commercial the past day or so. Because I'm so impressed with all of your work. <laughs> you do such a great job. Thank you. Um, and then even yesterday, we can always kind of... Uh, you know, pull this one out, but this is kind of what you're working on yesterday, which was yeah. really cool. And yeah. we see elements of that, like this, mm -hmm. like this sort of wispiness yeah. in your Patronus. I kind of like the wispies. I'm into the wispies too. <laughs> I do a lot of wispiness <laughs> in my <laughs> images. But um, this one, again, um, a lot of people think that I added on her hair and things like that. No, she was jumping. I actually caught the shot. I was very excited because it was in the, like the last 10 minutes of light and I got the shot and I threw my hands in the air and I was like, yes, mm. I got it. <laughs> I was so excited. Yes. Um, and the ba and this is what the sky actually looked like. But if you um, hide all the layers, when I went to edit her, you lose a lot of that sky. So again, I made her in her own layer, added the sky back in so Is, I could. Where did um, you get that beautiful sky? Was that taken the same day? Yeah, or? that was the same day, same background. And then I added like her in, and then I added her hair back in, and kind of worked with all of that because. That's awesome. So the Patronus was added later. Um, I created that in Photoshop. Again, it was about 50 layers, three to four hours. And so I don't have the PSD on that, but again, and I'm just adding colors and curves and brightness contrast. You know. And everything you to know kind how of you, blend You know how you just together. add layers and make, make something amazing. You know how you do that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and um, this was the final edit. This but again, so it matched so well and the hair was easier to work with because oh. it was taken on the same background that I used. And uh, I think one thing I've definitely learned from you, like yesterday and today, you just mentioned it, sort of like taking all these photos that might be reference photos, maybe even things that you, you're not sure if you need it or not, mm -hmm. right? Like, I just like how you, you take these pictures, you know, you know you can take this sky from over here on the same day and add it in. Uh, well, and the lighting yeah, kind of tends to work. And all, yeah, so. and I went, I went with the intention to get that. So I actually, where is the tie? So I took a picture separately of her tie. Oh, wow. I flew it out. And so I was able to kind of add more elements of movement to that image. Mm -hmm. Because I just thought it added something. It totally does. To it make actually it kind adds, of fly. adds more of that. And my mom was holding the tie. Oh, really? She went there for that shot. It's, oh, wow. you know. It's a team effort sometimes. It is a team. You can get the whole 
the whole family involved, <laughs> which is cool. She was awesome. She was like holding the tie out. How how close do I hold it? And how <laughs> far? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Aaron Visual says you're the best. Oh, thank you. You are. You're always so <laughs> kind. <laughs> um, yeah. So I. So yeah. I. That was basically what it was. But um, I've gotten a, quite a few messages and responses about how I did the Patronus. So I'd like to put something together. I think soon. That would be... But it's you know again 50 layers to go over right now. So. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually didn't bring the PSD because I didn't think I was going to be taking this one out, but I figured I was talking so much about Harry Potter yesterday, might as well uh, bring out one of the images that yeah. I've done. And um, totally, I'd love totally to know interested. what uh, all of your Patronus would be, if you could choose uh, an animal. What is, uh, can you just like dumb it down for me? <laughs> what is a Patronus? Well, a Patronus is created when you think about your happiest memory, and um, oh. it's a charm that can only be if you focus on your happiest memory, and you can't actually choose your Patronus. It kind of comes to you, and it can and change it's an over animal? time. Yes, and it can change over time um, if some huge drastic life event happens to you. Is there uh, an so online quiz that I can take to yes, figure out what my Pottermore, Patronus is? Pottermore.com. Pottermore. You can actually find out your house there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, that's awesome. Hers is a Kung Fu Panda. Oh, yeah. That's so good. Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. Nice. So Jordan's I would like to create more of these because these are so fun. And uh, I'd like to create some more Patronus for my uh, Patronus charms for my uh, feet as well. But yeah, so this one in itself just... If you can see, I use a lot of curves. So I'll be curve layer one, curve two, curve three, curve four, and I do them as I'm editing just to keep um, balancing everything together until I just think it looks right. I don't know. <laughs> that yeah. one, if for somehow in the end, I go, okay, that's the one. That's the last curve layer I'm going to use. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's. It's really cool. I think, oh, and by the way, I think this might be good. I don't know if you use like, I think lookup tables are cool. Uh, color lookup, have you ever? It's newer. Can I show it to you? Yeah, you're... I don't use those too much. I'm kind of aware of them, but um, yeah. I haven't used them. But just, I saw you using it yesterday, so yeah. Yeah, just uh, do it. keep it. We'll keep it simple, but right down here. Um, actually, I learned about Threshold from Aaron Nace this morning, which was fantastic. Uh, but color lookup. Isn't right it so here. interesting how you can just play off of each other and learn so many yeah. little things all and the I, time? It's so fun, yeah, just seeing e each and every one work. But all these are, these, just like you may, you have all these different uh, uh, adjustment layers, mm -hmm. that's all these are, are uh, is a combination of adjustment layers. Right. So what you do is you just pick the one that you want. Here's a two strip. Where is it at? Oh, it helps if you put it on top above everything else. Sorry, I broke it. Can you fix it for me? What'd you do? Can you just move that layer? Like do an undo and I think I took off a layer mask accidentally. Okay. So I might need to uh, Z, Command Z. So We're back. Good, good. And then can you <laughs> just move that layer to the very top? And then I'm gonna let you go through it. So it's at the top. Mm -hmm. Why is it so dark? Let's do change that from two strip look to something else. The drop down. Go to three strip. Why is it black? You tell me. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I just, why do I have to break it, everybody? Um, delete. So I saw that he said you can create your own LUTs, which is true, but um, I tend to. I do stick around the same color theme a lot, um, but then I do create individually for each one. Some of so these, I, I don't feel... know. Yeah, so that's kind of what it what it does is goes through, and it's almost like it's adding an Instagram filter, uh, but it also simulates lenses and different. Well, not lenses, but cameras. Mm -hmm. um, and it and it comes from the fact that when it actually comes from the video world where you had all these different video editing you know systems and you needed all you needed the film to have a consistent look, so right. they made these little LUT files and you can pass them around. Yeah, I know those are good too, especially if you know, hey, I'm gonna edit like this quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You'll have those to return to. Yeah. Saves you a bit of time. Even all of these, like mm -hmm. all these adjustments, and I don't think you really need to do this, but you could do a. 
you should be able to do a, is it under file, export, color lookup table. That is her. Right. Well, anyway. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, so yeah, so that's kind of what I wanted to show for that image is just kind of how I threw those layers together. So if you are trying to create a background and I don't know if you're using stock or if you're shooting um, yourself, it's really nice to use something that's uh, similar that you can bring kind of back into the image. So the fact that I shot this at the same location, then shot mm -hmm. the sky at the same location at the same time, um, and I was able to bring the colors back in really um, a lot more easily. Yeah. And uh, it so just good. made it look way more dramatic <laughs> and intense. Yeah. <laughs> this Yeah, it looks so good. This whole composition is just fantastic, by the way. I think it's so cool. Well, like, she jumped up, casting her spell into the sky, mm -hmm. and I snagged the shot and was very excited. I did use a little um, off-camera lighting as well. So, okay. uh, to kind of light up that ground a little bit in her okay. face, because it was towards cool. the end of the day. So. Yeah. No, I'm into, I'm into the composition. I'm into all the colors, by the way. Notice how you kind of have this balanced out. You have the kind of the whites, the mm -hmm. sky that you brought in. I, you know, everything about it. Well, like, I got really lucky again with the sky. Colorado helps yeah. a lot because <laughs> they bring in these dramatic skies. And I knew what I wanted to do with this image. I knew I wanted to do a Patronus. I knew kind of how I wanted it to look. I didn't give myself enough time when I got there. That tends to happen to me a lot. I will yeah. rush out. <laughs> uh, but I got really lucky with the top of the sky being dark that night, and I was able to bring that really out so I could make the Patronus stand out. Yeah, this is that's really cool. And is that a recent? Yeah, oh yeah, that's this yeah. Is when you shoot out, literally. Yeah, when you shoot outside too, you're really dependent on the weather. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, so whenever I can, I just take a lot of shots of the sky wherever I go. So if I see something, even if I'm not shooting that night, and I see beautiful clouds, I'll just keep taking shots mm -hmm. of them, and I kind of call them my little cloud stocks mm -hmm. because I can just pull them out if I have a real shoot that day and it's not a pretty sky, I can go and pull one of those. Yeah, and like if if you do end up doing this, maybe you're doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you can also contribute to Adobe Stock, by the way. Just want to throw that out there. So if you do end up oh yeah, and collecting there's so all these many images, skies. you know, there's so many skies out. Oh, I can yeah. contribute. Yeah, I'm thinking you oh. can contribute to oh, it just because like I think you're nice. you're if I you're about it. because I mean talented photographer, you're taking all these <laughs> photos. Who actually I could easily see somebody maybe wanting to do a sort of Harry Potter type thing. I know, that's why I was thinking about doing a tutorial on the Patronus. Yes. To kind of teach everybody how to make their own. Yeah. Then they, they can create their own. Into it. And uh, we, like, I used a stock image for, I mean, everything else is drawn. Mm hmm But you use a stock image for the stag because I don't take pictures of stags. But if you yeah. saw the, that's why I want to show it all together, because if you saw the image of the stag, you'd mm -hmm. be like, how did you make a glowing Patronus from that? Because yes. it's just kind of a regular image of a stag. So. Into it. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally into it. Just using it as a, like a sketched outline. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so yesterday I was working on this cloud image and I did go home and I just go home. Uh -huh. <laughs> I went back to the hotel home home for today mm -hmm. and uh, I you know I added this whole layer so this was done with a brush I took more off of the clouds this is done with these cloud brushes that I have and you can kind of mess I messed with the grain a little to match up the grain I messed with the which is color is that hard to do how did you match no, I'm gonna the show grain? that up here oh, please do so All I right. erased a bunch of that out too so I could brush that in but I just wanted to show what it can look like. You can also use, um, they have tons of cloud overlays and stock images and things that you can use as well if you prefer that to brushes, but I'm just showing that it is an option. And then I did also add in um, the bird mm. roughly, but I wanted to show you how you can color match him Good. well when he's a stock. So let's see if I can actually see it. This is such a small screen. <laughs> I know. Okay, so I'm gonna take the opacity down probably to 85-ish, or maybe a little bit more, like 90. But now I wanna mess with the curves a little bit because I really believe that that really helps 
blend them in. I feel like there are people, like there's uh, designers or compositors, like some use curves, some use levels. Yeah, Do level you use levels? Not, or, not as often. Okay. I'm a curves person, Got it. if you can't tell. <laughs> yeah. I just like the way they work. Um, so see how I brought that kind of down? Mm -hmm. So just a little bit, con you know, brought the contrast down, but then also. So I just wanted to do that, but then you can take it to another level, say color balance, and say, you know what? He's not really blending as well as I wanted to. Oh, you Gonna just bring uh, him like up like that. Now he's blending a lot better mm -hmm. with the whole scene. Wow. So when you back out, you just he's an added part, but he's not like everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that helps a lot. Yeah, I would just not two know. Two simple things. Was that color balance? Is yeah. that what that was? I, yeah, I've never used like color balance that way and you knew very in, like very instinctually like what to do which way to swing those so colors are just what I spend a lot of my time on and um, I'll even show people in my family oh look at this versus this and they won't be able to really tell what I just did but for me it looks like two drastically different photos so that's just how my mind works but again you know He's just a lot more blended than he was. I yeah. think he's just, it's just better all around if he's not standing out too much. Let's see. Okay, so somebody asks, what's the difference between, or Sveki asks, the what's the difference between curves and levels? Good question, which is kind of hard to answer. It's, it's to define it, basically. I literally right. had to Google it. Did you just Google yeah, it? Yeah, I'm like, what does what is the difference? <laughs> I just don't use levels very much at all. <laughs> well, um, and it sounds like that curves allow you to choose which portion of the tone scale you wish to And that's why I adjust. like it, because I'm able to bring part of it up and part of it down and kind of work like that. Is level changing all of it? Yeah, it changed, proportionally changes all of the tones in the tonal range, whereas curves allow you to choose which portion, which segment of the tones, because you saw the graph there. If you so it gives you more control. It gives you more control, ultimately. And I think that that, to me, that's what I want when yeah. I'm adjusting color. Totally. Can you double click on it again and just to kind of dive into the curves? If you do still, or do you, yeah, Wait. double click right over there in the, or on the little, okay. oh, oh there you go, perfect. Yeah. So yeah. So you're able to kind of and yeah, you, bring part of it down mm -hmm. and mess around with this a lot more. Very Again, cool. this part being more of how your contrast is over the image. Yeah. The cool thing is, is there. I used to use curves and I would overuse it and I didn't know really what I was doing. And with more and more practice with it, I was able to just, it's, for me, curves is about really slightly adjusting those things. You don't want to do like super drastic things in curves. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm, yeah. Because as soon as you start going too drastic with it, it just looks weird. Yeah. Sounds like Jan Erika curves scare, scares him. It can be a little intimidating. It is intimidating. It is, absolutely. Yeah. Um, when I started using it again, I would just overuse it. And I would think, why doesn't this look natural at all? Why would anybody ever use this tool? It's just ridiculous. But then the more I started using it and only slightly using it, the better it was. Okay. Subtlety is the key. Yeah. Then you're I ahead like of the it. curve, man. Ah, said that. those <laughs> puns. Jan Eric's That's full punny. of puns. <laughs> he is, he's like Mr. Dad joke. And I I'm, love I'm those. into it. I'm into <laughs> it too. So again, Got some clouds on there. And I'm almost done with this and then we'll move on to the next one that I had. Sounds good. Um, but. You just do your thing, we'll watch you and. Uh, and um, so, um, oops. Uh, paint in some happy little clouds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just gonna. Get over to my brushes. Where'd you go? Oh, cause you yeah. need a brush selective maybe. Right, but um, also 
I didn't label it, so I thought it was the other layer oh. I had up there that yes. I was working on. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem if you don't label. Because now I'm like, oh, which one am I working with? So label your stuff. See? Where did that one even go to? I don't know. I don't know. I feel See? like I broke your computer. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to check some of these guys out. Way too big. And uh, I'm going to check out the color. I want it to kind of match, but kind of be a little bit brighter. See how that guy's looking. Oh, that looks good already. Just like a little yeah. bit of texture up there. Again, it's not grained, so it's going to look kind of odd. Where did you, uh, where did you get these fantastic brushes? This one was brush easy. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. See, there's some cloud. So if you check out here. Now I'm just gonna um, add some noise to it. Because I feel like it needs to have a little bit of green. And if you notice that you added some noise and it's kind of looking weird like that and not grainy with the rest of your image, you can fade it. And I kind of fade it till it's matching a little bit more. Wait, how did you get to this? Where's that? Fade? Um, under edit. Edit. Yeah. edit. There's a shortcut for it. Fade. Add no. Okay. Fade add noise. Because when you add the noise, a lot of times it's just a little bit too much or not okay. enough. And then um, you can also do color balance. So just to kind of blend it into that a little bit more. And that was just like oh, one or See. two brushes was like bomb bomb, right? You just did. Yeah, because I started with her already holding the cloud pieces that she was holding. So that helped a lot, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's already just looking a lot better and a lot more blended. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was a big piece of that. It's just kind of going through. Of course, it's never going to look exactly the same because every time you're creating with it, you're not going to be able to create it all the same. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, it's nice because it kind of just does, here's these clouds, mm -hmm. try to, <laughs> you know, create with it. And that was kind of similar to the wind I was doing yesterday as well. Um, yeah, that's really cool. And you just, sam the color you just sampled, right, the sky or mm -hmm. like, or that? Or no, the, I sampled or... the cloud she was already holding. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So that it would kind of blend into it a little bit better. And Very you can, cool. and sometimes I'll use the burnt, well, I can show you, but sometimes I'll use, you know, the the burn tool if I feel like it needs to be burned in a certain area, you know, and probably not that high Have of an exposure, but you know, yeah. kind of like that and just where the shading is. And the burn tool with the dodge tool really helps you also paint in here where you can add the dodging on one side and the burn on the other to make it look oh, okay. like the light is coming from one direction. Nice. So you can flip it and do that too. Uh, good, good tip, Jan Eric. Just mentioning uh, adding noise, like monochromatic noise, mm -hmm. is good because otherwise you get these little color dots. Yes, no, that's true. You're right. That's good. You're right. But I like this. So you just you can paint with one color and then you jump yes. in and start dodging and burning mm -hmm. where appropriate. Yeah. No, he's right. I forgot about that. But yeah. So basically, um, you know, you just want to make sure you're. If, if you don't use a lot of grain, you don't need to worry about that. I do kind of have a grainy feel to some of my images and I just kind of do that in a little bit of a vintage vibe to some of them that I do. I mean, they're clean, but at the same time, I kind of like working with a little bit of um, softness and then green, but um, it's personal. Very cool. It's a personal thing. Well, yeah, and it, it goes kind of with the style because it's very, uh, yeah, the grain just goes with the style, just kind of totally works with it, so. Uh, and yes. here's my wind. So, if we want to go back in there. So we're almost done with this, but I'm gonna add, you know, some leaves and some wind. Into and it. so I can just do that real quick, and then we can move on. Yeah. So yeah, Garland, uh, she was holding some uh, stuffing, not stuffing. What is what is she holding? The pillow stuffing. Pillow stuffing. From a craft store. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Into it. 
But she did really have to jump that high, if you're also wondering about that. <laughs> no, I used a little old wooden <laughs> stool. <laughs> yeah, nice. It's like from a and flea you, market. <laughs> feel free, we do have, uh, and if you did, if you want to learn how the rest of this was made also, there was the replay available in the replays tab as well, so you can kind of scrub through that and see what we did yesterday. Here's some smoke brushes. And I was working with some of these yesterday. Again, see they're like kind of like that. And if you leave them big, they actually start really looking like smoke. Because mm -hmm. you can warp them. Oh, now I'm warping both of them together. But again, you can warp them. I recommend blurring them because um, Mm -hmm. The more blurred they are, the more they're going to look like wind. But you did a special blur. Like I did a lens blur. Yeah. Let me let me do that again. I like I working li with lens blur because I find that it really resembles how a camera looks when it blurs something. So mm -hmm. I like that type of blur, you know? Because it looks like when I'm taking my... Well, and it's... Oh, that looks nice, too. I'm gonna warp it's just it, more. Though. It just seems like more realistic. Like you're creating something natural. You're not gonna have this nice even blur mm -mm. It, for something like this. Right. And again, you know, just messing with it. But let me just show you really quick about the, because all of it, you know, I might go back ten times and say I don't really like how that wind looked. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to fix it around. Um, but here's the lens blur. I think I took it up to about forty, the radius. And, um... Oh yeah, Chat and Win is coming up, as mentioned Chat and Win! Yeah! Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's dive there in. We, well, go. we have fireworks! We have fireworks! Look! Oh! Which means it's time for a Chat and Win! <laughs> so we're gonna fireworks. dive into that right now! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Yes. Sorry, Paulo. Uh, type in your question later. Right now, we're diving into chat and win, as you can see. Uh, just say something nice, like, you two look fantastic today. You look, like, <laughs> so healthy and full of life. And uh, just some actual, you know, English words so we know there's a person there and not a cat walking on your keyboard. Because <laughs> cats and, love to do that. Yeah, right? Do they just, like, do you have a cat? Do you ever get lost in those, like... Uh, online cat videos. Every time I start watching a whole series of YouTube cat videos, I just don't really? stop because they just oh. continue playing them and cats are so entertaining. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> cats are entertaining and I, I like watching dumb dogs. Yes. And I don't think dogs Any are dumb. Any pretty much like animal They're not, video. But, oh, you know, like, cats it's kind of sad when I, you know, like, it's, yeah, it's good times. Uh, well, anyway, congratulates Mario. Mario Rosales is the yes. proud winner of <laughs> Chat and Win, which means you won a $30 gift card, essentially. $30 in credit to Moo, Moo.com, for all your printing needs, <laughs> business or otherwise. <laughs> Holiday, really, whatever, whatever you want. Print up something that just says, hey, your, your hair looks nice today, and you just hand it to somebody and make their day. I don't know. <laughs> Just thoughts. Oh, Munir says we look so cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> I, always feel, to I always feel that. the opposite of cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you really? I don't know. I never see myself as, oh, cool. <laughs> You're but cool. But thank you. I appreciate like, it. <laughs> me, I'm always leaning up against something in, in my mind. I'm kind of leaning into this right now. I'm always, I'm always <laughs> doing a lean because that's like says cool. That's what my mind's doing is leaning up against something. That's pretty something. cool. <laughs> <laughs> So congratulations, Mario. We're gonna dive back into this. And uh, yeah, this wispiness looks really good. So just kind of making it wispy and uh, adding a layer mask. We're going to pull this up a bit. I'm gonna just see, oops, it's a little too much. But kind of just, I don't want it to be so strong everywhere. 
Yeah, it's yeah, fading it out in, spark, in parts. And you know you can do that forever, so. <laughs> yeah. Have fun. <laughs> Chandler, Chandler says it is so pretty. Oh, thank you. you. Your, uh, Jan Eric says you're a wizard, and this is very wizard-like. <laughs> That's what I like to create. I love wizard wizardry. This was taken in Colorado, where magic really does exist. Yeah. Magic does exist there. I feel like their weather is magical. <laughs> the weather there. I think so too. And also. It's also just really dry. <laughs> if you don't have a humidifier, you might dry yeah. out completely. You will just shri- you'll be like a raisin. You just shrivel up <laughs> like a raisin. I feel like whenever I get off the flight, going to somewhere that has humidity, my skin immediately just soaks it oh, up. I believe I it. I feel alive. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's the best. I, I love <laughs> humidity is the best. I went into, um, so I saw that you said uh, the dress will have to move more. And it entirely depends too. I mean, I agree with you, Robert. I think that that's a good thing that you saw too. But if it's mm-hmm. flying out, dress looks so different in so many different winds. And it was actually windy there. So it's actually how it was moving um, oh, and okay. how I shot it. Nice. Uh, so. But, you know, all the details. But that's a good call. I, li- I like that whole thought, and that's why Chad is really I do, good. That's why I like Rob it, too, because I like, I love, I love, like, getting different perspectives on my thing. Totally. Think, I think that that's kind of what's really nice when a bunch of artists get together. You can kind of say, well, you can do this, and you can do this, and yeah. you brainstorm this, and, and we you totally, can kind of think of something that you never thought of before. Uh-huh. But, yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. what that's what chat does. I think everybody yeah. like there that we have a lot of art directors here. We like everybody's an art director. But we like have all this help to p- kind of point out things whether they look good or not, which right. is why I like and live so streaming. So thank you, Robert. That yeah, was great. He's a really good yeah, really, and he's really talented, by the way. I wanna check out your work. Oh well, man, he's been a he's been a streamer. He's been with us before. He's been a guest, I should say. No way. As an illustrator. Well, Rob Zilla. we'll have to connect. I would love to see oh, yeah. all of it. He's the He's awesome. Again, this is like my first time doing anything like this. She's so. you're used to working at home and it's like two AM. Pajamas she, on. She's left handed, working snacks with her on right the, hand. Snacks on the desk. S- snacks <laughs> that's why she needs her left hand free for the snacks. And working away at like midnight. Yeah. So I know, but I do appreciate that. So for that situation, I mean, yes, you could definitely, I could take pieces of the dress from different photos, add more dress movement to it, and do all of that as well. Um, again, I feel like you it's so, it's um, sometimes too, when you're looking at your own work, you kind of overlook some things like that. Yeah. Because uh, you're in there working for hours on something. But also, I just feel, um, yeah, it's just, it's interesting how different perspectives can really kind of help, you know? And that's yeah. why I like the chat, because yep. it's really good to hear those things. But yeah, um, so, you know, just kind of fading some areas out. Uh, I don't need this. And kind of playing around with the wind. So this is how it's Thank looking. You. Again, in my original image, I added leaves blowing in the wind as well because it was fall, and I love all things fall. So I was really uh, <laughs> trying to incorporate leaves wherever I could. I was a little bummed this year with Colorado because we were getting right into peak, and there was a blizzard, and then everything died. <laughs> oh, no. oh, everything like froze. Yeah, everything whatever. froze. I was so excited. There were so many colors everywhere, and. Uh, I woke up the next morning after the blizzard and everything was melting and then it was just gone. Oh man. <laughs> um, that's Colorado. So for you. I added leaves in. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's But then good. we got snow. So then I did some snow shots. Yeah, I so. and I was just kinda of scrolling <laughs> scrolling through your Instagram and you can really see kind of the seasons change, which is kind of kind Yeah, of and the winters definitely get, you know, uh, colder in tones, even yeah. colder than I usually do. Just uh, because yeah. it's harder to it's, find color, yeah. you know. Well, I, I and so that's when clothes come. You know, even if you're doing stock images, or you're doing, you know, photographing on your own, it's really good to have a pop of color yeah. in there somewhere. Something where it draws the eye in there. That's why I liked the red on her dress in this because it immediately catches your eye, but doesn't take away from the rest of the shot. So mm-hmm. I think color pops are key. Yeah, I really like using them. 
Well, and I like your color palette in general. It's kind of like a little bit more understated and very earthy and everything, and it looks just like really good. Um, also, I just wanted to kind of uh, echo what's ha talking, what people are talking about in chat. So mm -hmm. we basically have this challenge. It's the little dream contest. You can go ahead and go to that challenge tab and uh, submit through that link. Uh, it's that woo box link, and we'll just reviews, review those entries. Um, and then, uh, you know, hopefully give you some advice that might be helpful uh, so you can potentially win the actual contest that ends on the 10th. Nice. So that's what we'll do that in 50 minutes. We'll review those, the entries. So okay. as far as leaves go, I mean, sometimes I'll have my husband throw them up in the air as I take a bunch of shots of leaves or you can take um, up against a uh, white background or you can get stock leaves or you can get leaf brushes or you can get leaf overlays. The most important thing when you bring the leaves in is really matching those colors, mm. really matching the curves, really matching all of that because that's what's going to make them look realistic and also playing with the uh, opacity. So here's some little I don't even remember how I did them before, but I think I had one guy up here, and it's good, but the colors are kind of odd. So, kind of taking away, at least for me. That's how I felt. So yeah, I, the I, I like playing around with, uh, yeah, exactly. I like kind of playing around with blurs in the foreground because it brings depth to the image, yeah. right? An atmosphere. But again, I, I'll just show you how I play with color balance um, in there, but just, you know, with that, and also taking the opacity down a little bit, blending that into there. Okay. That might be. Uh... Sorry if I get quiet. No, you do. You do. Your <laughs> that's thing. how. That's what I do. Just no, podcast on, you're... music on, or just something. Like, Goodbye, yeah, world. I just and need my snacks. On Radio Lab, <laughs> yeah. we're going to discover the words of. <laughs> what podcast do you listen to? I listen to quite a few different ones. So here's some fun leaves that mm. I found. Those are kind of cool, except they look a little bit cartoony. Is that a word? Yeah, <laughs> it is now. Cartoony. These are looking cartoony to me. Um, and so if I bring them in, it's kind of just trying to give a little bit more movement. I'm mm -hmm. going to again color balance these. But I'm also going to add grain because it needs to go and I'm going to lower the opacity as well. See, lowering that opacity already has made it just blend so much better. They look so much more realistic to me than if they're like that. Mm -hmm. Could you, um, and did you did you play with the opacity of that layer? Would you ever do that? Like lower the opacity or like, I don't know, I'm asking. I, if you can, did you just lower the opacity? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> that shows you how much I'm Wait, paying attention. Wait, I think I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, you just lower the. Hey, yeah. what would be a great idea is if you lower the opacity. Well, I was gonna go. I just went back to show like if you don't. You, do you know it. what I was doing is I was actually looking up here. I think you were talking about it, but I was looking up at the yeah. brush at the, the the brush opacity, right. and I'm sorry. No, it's all good. I no worries. Um, there's a little <laughs> odd leaf on her foot that's just kind of taking away. It's like a sixth toe. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that. There you go. Bye. Boom. <laughs> and. Um, I did add more than that as well. And then I also talked about, you know, you can go in and again, add that um, n noise. And like he was saying, the monochromatic. Some noise. Some noise. Yeah. So. But before I do, I wanted to finish the leaves. Um, again, it's almost at a close because I think I was going to. And I have really creative names for these, like leaves one and leaves <laughs> two and leaves three. So if you really want to get creative. <laughs> right. This one has a lot looking random. Ah. Definitely don't want to color cover him with it, but. All right. I like it. 
I mean, it's just putting leaves on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, the excitement right now. You know, you know leaves. <laughs> you know, you know more leaves. Just doing you know, more leaves. leaves. <laughs> This, is, like this is the exciting part right here. This no. Is, this is the, it's all good. Yeah, this is the fun part. Anyway, you guys get what I mean. <laughs> yeah. This is what happens. And I also want him to be underneath the original. And then I'm going to go through, obviously, get rid of some randoms that aren't really adding to the scene or making it just too much. Because I really just want to touch yeah. of these. They're really just for the atmosphere. They're not here to... Oh, and that's another thing. You can mess with the opacity of all of them, or you can do this. You can just kind of use your brush and just click and, and kind of lighten that, individual did ones. Did you just adjust the opacity of that? I haven't, I haven't, though? because the opacity is gonna adjust that whole layer. And if you have a bunch of things on one layer, but you just wanna adjust one, mm -hmm. just use your brush and light click, you know, take take the, um, ah, where'd it go? Take this, I have the opacity up here at 49%. And so I'm just, you can go over and kind of lightly yeah. take away, because I find that sometimes when I bring certain things like that in, mm -hmm. some of them are really vibrant and need to be brought down and some of them don't. Yeah. All these things I forget to say. Oh yeah, and then this. <laughs> but again, just messing with all of that. And this one's nearly done. I think I added a little bit of light in on the left-hand side. Um, and things like that, but you get the basics of where it was going. Yeah, I love it. Okay, save so I it think. Or do whatever. You don't have to save it. I'm just like, hey, looks good. Save your work. Save your work, <laughs> folks. Okay. And Thank you. Uh, it looks like Felicia was also donating some leaves to us in case you needed some more. Yes. And just She just Those added some in there. Like, in case you need some, here's some for you. Do whatever you want to do, dude. <laughs> so here's Patronus. The, yeah, there you are. Okay. So the other image. So yeah. I would love to hear if they have specific questions too. Gotta go. <laughs> Jimmy okay. has an Ollie too. <laughs> oh, we both have you an Ollie. Oh, yes. That's right. <laughs> so does Jimmy. Cute. Yes. I actually, yeah, I saved the image I just did. Don't forget to save, Chandler said. Mm. I saved the image I just did, but some of them I didn't need to save because I already had those saved in other places. I, I personally like to know how you cut out and like match images to like the background and stuff. And just, I'm kind of looking at. Well, I was gonna go over this image. Should I show it or should I just Ooh, the one in the background? It? Oh, no, or, oh, I have, I have. <laughs> Ooh, you know, this excited. one? No. So, oh man. You know, all <laughs> but uh, okay, which, um, which one? Yeah, show. I have different ones. This one I thought would be cool because um, I just didn't know if I should show you the end result or kind of where I'm going with it. But Ooh, let me um, let me just open. I'll show you. So this one, I took this sh this beautiful shot of these pumpkins. <laughs> Which I think it's great. I think you don't think you do good work. And I'm like, How? I don't, I think it looks cool. I know, I actually really enjoy looks taking pictures of these. Shallow, shallow This was fun the because the pumpkin patch wasn't open yet and I had this idea for a pumpkin patch. So I just went and bought six pumpkins and set up my own pumpkin patch. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. And then, um, so I just, you know, I wasn't willing to give up. So another story of getting there 20 minutes before the sun yeah. went down. But it's oh, true because I actually left I left in time for the shot and then got to the pumpkin patch and there were no pumpkins. I even called oh, ahead wait. and everything and they told me there were pumpkins. There were no pumpkins. And then you went there and there were no pumpkins. There were no pumpkins. So I had to You do... had to go buy them and then yeah, display so them in the field. Yeah, so that's why. So there's my, my daughter being her Cinderella there's self. Nick. <laughs> yes. That's my husband holding the pumpkin. And uh, I really wanted to get her hand on the pumpkin because I planned on making her small. Oh. And so I wanted to be able to do that more easily where it matched. And um, again, she's taken in the same light on the same background. And um, 
kind of looking like she's trying to find her uh, carriage. <laughs> Oh, so, yeah. She, she's like, oh, okay, I parked my pumpkin around here somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, like yesterday. Right. Have you ever made cinema graphs? Yes. Mm -hmm. I could actually see that in your work. Like, how, how I some have of a them. Few, could I have be... a few on there if you want to. Ooh, this well, is here, one? if you go up, this was the most ooh, recent Sorry. one I did. Um, I play around with mirror cinema graphs a lot. This one. If you want to show oh, that Oh, of quick. course I want to show this. So there I am in the snow. That's fun. Like a crazy person. And it, it, it was actually snowing. <laughs> it was actually That's, snowing. I don't know I, if that was your husband throwing and snow I didn't, up in and front I of the did camera. It, no, I didn't wear the right shoes at all because I oh, didn't no. think it was snowing that much when I went out. And it was a big mistake because I kept running back and forth from the car. And the first time I went out, I was like, this is really painful. Mm. And I went back to the car and I decided to get back out again. And I'm like, oh, it's not as bad. So then I should have known that I was probably getting frostbite oh, because shit. I was numb. Oh, that's so scary. <laughs> but it was, it was very like, quick. I kept running back and forth freezing. from the my car. My feet are freezing. Yeah, that's I what, know. That's what the twirl feels so, like. So I um, took the mirror out. So I got the original shot and then I got the video. That's very cool. So, and I like, I just like the composition. I like how you're. I just wanted to feel like I was in a snow globe, but it's not as fun as a snow globe looks. <laughs> this is. But no, it was very. Cooler. It woke me up. Yeah, I could only imagine. I was awake. <laughs> yeah. Without coffee. But I think this is more creative than a snow globe as well. It was. It was it's fun. A, I like creating these. So. Yeah. I took a little hiatus from them. Um, I took a little hiatus from them and uh, started making them again recently. Really missed them. They're just fun to create and kind of see an image move. Well, here's like one too. Oh, the book. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Very cool. And you don't need to get a long video, you know, just a some seconds that can loop. Yeah. Good, good subjects. I would like to right. possibly do a tutorial on that too, but yeah, somebody mentioned there's Cinemagraph Pro out there that makes it pretty easy for people mm -hmm. um, and things like that. Okay. And you can do it, but Photoshop is where I do mine. <laughs> yeah. So I'd like to do a tutorial for that just because I think people would really enjoy to see how you can mm -hmm. do it and not have to go get any other program. You can actually do it from Photoshop. Yeah. And yeah. it's not as hard as people might think it is. Yeah. It's like literally videos just like, no, just like an so, image. No, and it really is. And so when people ask me, what do I use? And I tell them Photoshop, they say, oh, isn't it difficult in there? So maybe I could do a tutorial on that and kind of show yeah. how That'd I do cool. it in there. So you're just using the quick selection tool? I am because I did the select subject and that's new to me. Um, but I had to go back in. So I did select subject a little bit, but then I have to kind of go and tighten it up. Or... Yeah, this is the exciting part, right? No, this is what <laughs> everybody wants. To, I Everybody wants to see you do this. Mm -hmm. Just to, they want to see how you do stuff like, because everybody does things differently. So. Right. And it's that's kind of nice. what I love about it, is that everyone does things differently. Yeah. You're not supposed to have, there's no um, one way. And then sometimes you can show really, you know, you can show certain things and I can look at what you just showed me earlier and go, oh wow, now I can do that too, you yeah. know? Or you learning from Aaron earlier. Yeah, I mean, we've- Picking up and little bits of information. And that's cool about these, like even, you know, again, just like the replays, you can kind of go back and watch, watch some of those. I think this week, everybody's live streams totally worth a rewatch. So oh. her, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to go back, you know, sorry, I'm yeah. using the hot tools right now. So you this, are using uh, 2019, Photoshop 2019, the latest version, because you have multiple undos. Yeah. <laughs> Sharina says, thanks, thank you. She loves these streams. Oh, so that's, that's good. Yeah, and actually, they, they also too, want you to do the do two more tutorials in Photoshop. 
like the cinemagraph. Oh, so, they they said that. Yeah, people are like, oh, please cool. do that. Oh, that would be great. I would love to do something Alexandra like that. Alexandra would watch it. Yes. Probably more people will. If people will watch it, then it's worth the effort. <laughs> yeah. Um. Again, deselected some of it, doing a very rough cutout of her legs because you, I actually want a lot of this grass. Mm -hmm. She's going right back into the grass, so this yeah. is what I want. That's Otherwise, cool. I'd be in there fine detailing all that because if I didn't want anything she was in, but I do want that. It's gonna like make it look more natural because if you can't tell, she doesn't really have a foot. She's stuffed her foot in the grass. <laughs> so. That's good. Making sure I have everything. I'm really impressed with the quick selection tool though, personally. I love I it. I think it's freaking awesome. Like I use it way more than I ever thought I would. I love it. So you just selected select and mask? Yes. Sweet. Sorry, I should have talked about that. You're good. That's why I'm here. You just do your thing and I can just <laughs> I could be the commentary. Do a little like edge detection. It doesn't need much because it's gonna be going back on the same. Can you background. do like maybe with her hair, can you do are you gonna do refine edge a little bit with maybe Are you talking about this? Yeah. Yeah. Just so like people and this is what's tricky because the background's close to the same color. It actually yes. it could help it actually could help it. It makes it maybe harder to select, but the thing is is it's gonna look good. Because it's She's going on that a similar background. Yes, so. because otherwise it's a lot easier if you're getting a picture on a background that's separate from the color of the hair. White works really well. And you can even set up, I've set up in my backyard just like a white sheet. Oh yeah? Or whatever. <laughs> just something that you, know, you can do with that. Um, also, if you're picking a stock image, picking a stock image with a girl with hair on a white background is really good, or guy, whatever. But yeah. <laughs> somebody with hair on a white background, because it's much, e I feel like it's easier to remove. But um, this is going on a very similar background. She's gonna be here. Wait, it's fading. Um, so here, I just do this like this really quick. She's gonna be all in this brown. Oh, that's so, so that's nice. So right? I planned for that. That's why I shot her with brown on the background. That's why I didn't shoot low with her okay. head in the sky. Yeah. I shot her with her head in the grass. <laughs> that sounds weird, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, I took a picture of her like that. So I, um, and it was on purpose. So there she is, giant. <laughs> I'm trying to find out, like, the magic wand tool, I know some people are using it, it's part of, the, you know, I th obviously the um, quick selection tool is newer. I, I'm trying to figure out how long the magic wand tool has been in Photoshop. I was wondering, I'm wondering if it's been in there since, like, the beginning. That's what I'm trying to Magic find wand? Out. Yeah. So I'm just gonna see, obviously her feet don't match what the grass is like because now the grass is really giant on her. Um, but it's gonna be a lot easier to blend the fact that she has that. And then I'm gonna actually go in here and blur this a little bit and add some more of the bigger blades of grass. But mm -hmm. just having the grass already over her feet helps a lot. Yeah. And I then agree, you can Ryan. even think about this when you're doing stock because you can think about what images to find. Because I think Ted talked about how finding images is one of the hardest things when you're using stock. And I find yeah. that even when I'm adding a stock because there's gonna be a bird in here that's stock and two mice. When I add those in, it takes a long time for me to find the stock images that I think will work there. Mm -hmm. Or that have flat enough light or the, you know things like that. And you can yeah. actually twist the light in there. But finding the right stock is, is key. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. It is. Um, and, and we keep adding tools to stock. So mouse. Yeah. But we we could add like so many more. Just like kind of, as you j just mentioned, like, what other search criteria can we add for you to find the perfect image? Because the thing is, it's like. Oh, there's one. 
Oh, the little mice. That's the one I used. Oh, this one? No, really. Oh. Yeah. He's I'm going to be using him today. He's <clears throat> little mouse. <laughs> um. And I'm going to be adding a different sky. So before I blend her, I could just pop that sky in. This is another sky. It was one of my favorite skies I shot because it was just so pretty that night. And uh, there's so much pink. And it was kind of that suitcase shot you showed. That was that same night. I love this. That, that's, those colors are nice. So I think it just has a magical feel. So I end up using it a lot. I think this will be enough. Um. There. I kind of want to show a couple of, uh, so this is, while you're doing that, I'm going to show mm -hmm. this off really fast because yeah. I think this is cool. So again, you're going to be using this mouse found on Adobe Stock. It's cool. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go ahead and search for like, you can have an image and if I can grab this and drop it in, I can search based on this image, just like Google Images, which is super easy. We get it. So it's matching similar images based on all these attributes, right? But I can actually jump in and say, hey, you know what? Give me images that are the same color as the image that I've just dragged in there. Or give me the same content. I don't know if it's going to recognize this as a turtle, so I guess we'll find out. If it kind of doesn't. It kind of recognizes it more as a snake. Uh, but I'm just kind of showing how you can actually do it. Like if you had an image of a mouse and you need more oh, mice yeah. or something. Oh yeah, I was just, just using that the other day where you find the similar images. Mm -hmm. And that was really helpful. Yeah. Composition as well. And another cool one I think that I end up using a lot is like images with copy space. You can actually search for images with, with copy space in, in it as well. And depth of field. So, so I definitely use stock images, but they're just mostly animals. Yeah. And one. moons. You're like, animals <laughs> are not my thing. And moons, because I, you, you know, don't You're too busy moons. working at 2 a.m. to... <laughs> and then... You're, you're uh, doing your Photoshop editing hey, at 2 a.m. I, you know, completely respect all of that because that is not, you know, sitting and waiting on a bird to capture or also the... Um, you know, taking pictures of the sky and the moon at night. I mean, it's a lot of work. Yeah. So thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> to those of you who do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I plopped a sky in. Plus, you need a really good lens to do that. So yeah, you need absolutely. To know what you're doing. And I use a lot so. of pro like all my lenses are fixed. They're for portraits. That's what I shoot. Oh, okay. So um, yeah, I can see it right here. This being like one of those. Yeah, and. Again, here's some. And it took a lot of this long stick out, but I'm actually gonna have to take more of that out because if you see, it's kind of distracting. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. I like how so she's, she's like, where did in. I park my pumpkin? <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah, where where's my, my which pumpkin? one's my pumpkin Which carriage? one's my, I, I swear, I, who, right. I, who'd, who'd I give my pumpkin keys to? Exactly. Where's my? <laughs> These Where's don't look valet? like what I left for the ball. Yeah, these look it. <laughs> these don't Where'd, look comfortable at all. Yeah. <laughs> Where am I supposed to go? These things are already full. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so, and like you were just saying, because you showed the mouse I was going to use, mm -hmm. I have a couple different mice, because you have to have Gus Gus. And like <laughs> the what? Gus Gus, the mouse from Cinderella. Oh, is that? Is yeah. that the mouse's name? Yeah, the little, oh, little Gus mouse. Gus. Gus Gus, the one who always tried to carry too much food. Really? <laughs> yeah, and always dropped it. This is a little devious. I'll just switch over to this one really fast. That was a little devious right there. What's happening? Oh no. I think they're friends though. They they, they should be. Hopefully. Or hopefully they intervened. Yeah. They said let we got the shot. Mm -hmm. Let's separate the cat. I think they're just friends though. <laughs> they're just like It happens. That's actually the type of videos that I like that they have that are out there, like on YouTube and stuff, is like unlikely friends. True. Of animals <laughs> are like the best. Yes. Um, <laughs> unlike, we have a guess. There was a lion who took care of a baby gazelle. Really? For weeks. Wow. Um, nobody really knows why. 
It's just kind of weird, hmm. you know, that that occurred. So I am gonna take the excess like harsh edges off, but then I'm also gonna add some of the long grass back in. I like minimizing things, you know, yeah. you can, cause it makes your, especially when I am shooting in all different weather, it'll make winter a little bit more fun if I can add mm -hmm. something like this in and kind of switch up how the landscape looks. Yeah. Cause uh, in summer there's so much to look at in summer, but. Uh, good call though, Tim. Yeah, so you could always use like smart objects as well mm -hmm. if you're unsure about the size. Like even before you're gonna scale something down, like maybe if you're unsure about anything, yeah, make it a smart object. That's that's smart. That is smart. If it says <laughs> smart, just select it. Because <laughs> it means. That's what I think. <laughs> if it There's says like smart, a, it's a go. Yeah, just, just do why it. Why would you not? Why would you not? <laughs> it's true. It's like there's a uh, da, 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 sharpening. There's smart sharpen. There's like four sharpens. In, there's actually more like six of them in here, but there's a smart sharpen. It's probably the one you want to go with. Um, yes. Yeah. And do you ever use? Uh, do you know? Do you ever use the puppet puppet warp in Photoshop? I have. Um, why you want me to use it now? No, I was just <laughs> making sure. I was just, you know, just throwing it out there. No. Just throwing it. But out it there. would be one of those things where, like, if her arm needed to be higher or lower, yes, you can kind of. Those take are it. great because you can just kind a little, of adjust just like, a little bit of right. Yeah, totally into it. Do you use it? Uh, I yeah. I'm throwing I, it back at you. I I do. <laughs> do you yeah, I do it? use it. I do. I okay. use it a lot. I use it in uh, Illustrator, actually. Ill Illustrator has a puppet tool, so I'll use it there. And um, I want to see another one of your pieces, too. You showed me one yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let me show you my latest one. Like, in terms of a composite. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this is all about you. I don't even know why, but like here's here's one that I was working on. But there's that there's Enough that about same me. turtle. Um, so anyway, so I don't know what I was doing here, <laughs> but I thought it was kind of neat. But it is kind of a composition, but uh, just more like an advertisement. And I use the color lookup just to kind of even out all the tones, and it makes it look much more consistent. Just really, just these reds and greens. So I feel like that makes a really big difference. Is the color correcting, um, mm. and just making sure all the tones match? Because yeah. there's something about uh, the human eye that can. Th there's. It doesn't matter if you're a photographer, or creator, or not. Um, mm -hmm. There's something about the human eye that can usually just look at something within a second and say something's off here. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I might not create. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What's and making it not that. Yeah. not right, but it just doesn't look right. Yeah, um, and I think uh, so. What uh, Aaron Nace would do, what he was talking about this morning, was having check layers. So certain layers that might be your exposure, or mm -hmm. like black and white is a good example. Like if you turn your image black and white, that will um, allow you to just work on the 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 blacks and whites and just the brightness of it overall but it's just a different way of looking at images to see what's weird. Like you said, what doesn't look right about it. Um, he uses check layers. Check layers. Yeah. Well, I really, um, wrong. oops. I really love all of the tips that I've been learning from both Ted mm -hmm. and Aaron. Oh yeah. You Ted's can, in the house. Yeah. Hey, Ted. Hey, buddy. Hi, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the difference between smart sharpen, unsharp mask, and sharpen? I don't know. <laughs> Just joking. Unsharp mask, some of the unsharp mask will actually, like regular sharpen is probably the oldest, which kind of indiscriminately sharpens the whole image. Unsharp mask should do more like the edges. And I actually think Smart Sharpen will do, it's great for like a face. If you do Smart Sharpen on a face, um, 
it will make their eyes pop, but won't give the person, like, won't sharpen all their pores. So it sharpens the right parts, is what happens. And I'm unsure about Unsharp Mask, but I'm, it might work similar. So if you don't use this tool, it's a really fun tool. Which the, one? Co the Content Aware. I oh, mean, yeah. I definitely use the um, Clone Stamp too, but I just really like using it when, when I can because it's oh, just yeah. a, it's a fun one. I mean, it kind of has a mind of its own sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you go back a little bit and you kind of feel it out. Um, but I feel like it does such a good job of just taking things out that you don't really mm -hmm. uh, want in there. It's 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 a smart. And it it's should just be. Fast. It should be. Yeah. Content. It should be the smart smart content to wear. It should be the smart. But then if everything's <laughs> smart in it, you know, really everything in Photoshop right. is pretty smart. Everything, but you are everything in Photoshop is smart. It's smart. It's all. Just, just assume it's all smart. <laughs> yeah. But you know, just play girl you. Shit. And Boom. I'm taking that random stick out a little bit. It was just mm -hmm. getting in the way at the top. What you yeah, there's so many different. There's so many different you ways do. you can do to get, but this just. This is what I did. This is exactly what I do. I would do exactly, I do the exact same thing you do. The content aware? I do it the exact same way as I, I do that fill. I just select it and content aware fill. Select it, content aware fill. It's such a cool tool. And if um, you're new to Photoshop or anything, it's pretty much thinks for you. Mm -hmm. If you select around these certain things and it can feel out the background, it can select that and get rid of those things. Especially mm -hmm. when I'm shooting in nature and I find, oh, there was this big, long, weird, dead stick thing hanging out. <laughs> I don't want it in there anymore. And are you like, it's good for what? trash cans. How did I not see, it? or sometimes you're like, you're, how did I not see that? Like when you were taking the shot, you're like, that was there? Do you ever do yeah. that? Oh yeah, yeah, I know. You're like, that was there, <laughs> somehow I looked past Well, I do it, it a lot because again, like I talked about before, I tend to get there a little too last minute sometimes. Okay. For the yeah. shot. <laughs> But you know, my plan this time, I was two hours early, but there was no pumpkins. And you said it was a last minute rush, so you like, was this well, a last, last minute mi rush, like, f again? Because I feel like all your photos happen within <laughs> like five minutes before the sun goes down. Well, no. <laughs> this one was actually planned. I left the house two hours in advance, but the pumpkins were not at the pumpkin patch. So then it was a rush. Yeah, then it was a mad rush. Yeah. <laughs> but you did it, you pulled it off. Yeah. So, um, and with her hand too, there's still some weird piece right here. Mostly it's okay. What's odd about it is the fact that there is no shading under her hand. So I wanna work on some shading. Mm -hmm. um, just because if this was naturally there, there would be shading there. That kind of separates when things are looking a little odd or when they can look more natural and real. So. I mean, I use various ways, so the burn tool is really good, especially if it's gonna be on the same color on the same things. So. Yeah, okay, nice. And what about you? Uh, for shadows and mm -hmm. stuff? Um, you can do like drop shadows even where it thing, yeah. but. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess it kind of depends, but I. I think it depends The thing well. about, sometimes with like burning is like, well, they, these are on different layers, so that's why I think it'll be okay because it yeah. might burn over the whole thing, which would be weird. Sometimes when I do dodging and burning, it messes with the color to where it doesn't look right. That's true. So again, just finding the level of burn you want to do mm -hmm. as well too. Maybe um, I keep it at midtones usually. Okay. I yeah. find midtones works better than the highlights or shadows. But um, yeah, that's what I that's what I would do. That's actually what I did with uh, this like whole turtle thing. Trying to make the light, I did a lot of burning and stuff like that to and make sure. And that's where it's really valuable. One. That's yeah. why I kind of want to add in here. I will do it now, not just talk about it. <laughs> yeah. And then duplicate my layer. So I can always go backwards. Keep it on mid tones. I like using soft brushes. Um, the soft round is really mm -hmm. great for so many things. Go to. It's the go to. And then kind of fix the, you know, exposure. How's that looking? Oh, that's pretty good. And it's going to be under her too. So she already has a lot of sh shading on her arm, mm -hmm. just because she was already facing that light. So her arm is looking pretty good. And I just want to, you know, add. But see if it's not too much. I'm gonna. I think I want to make it a little bigger. 
But if it's not too much that you're adding, it won't mess with the color too bad. But see up here when you, oops, I'm pointing with my finger. <laughs> <laughs> see up here when you start getting to her fingers, mm -hmm. there's not enough shading on her. So I'll probably go in and add a little bit more shading yeah. on her so that blends in as well. And are you gonna cut out the hand? Yeah, that little no, piece I'm, there? Gonna, I'm gonna leave it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it adds something. I think, yeah. I think we should just leave it there for later. I would probably end up leaving. I'm like, what's wrong with it? Oops. <laughs> no, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll take it out. But uh, yeah, just you know, talking about just adding the burn, and I go back usually several times. But you can already see that it's looking much better, mm -hmm. much more realistic. There we go. Still a little light under her arm, so I'll fix that. But should I get this out now? Is it bothering yes, please. you? Yes, <laughs> please. Sorry. That was my subtle way of saying, hey, can you please remove that? It's really bothering me. And uh, there's several ways I do it, but I want to keep that shading under her finger. So yeah, how that's, are you? that's, that's main key for layer me. Layer mask. Yeah, she has a layer mask uh, on when I brought uh, her over. So, but I do want to make sure I'm keeping a lot of that shading. Oh, Tim, that's a good. One. What? What was the question? Asking about clarity, uh, the clarity slider in Camera Raw or Lightroom. Um, let's go to it. Yeah, let's go check it out. Oh. I went back too far. Camera Raw is awesome in. Uh, Photoshop. Like, yes. It's the one, if there's a one like magic button, uh, camera rush. Yeah. Is like literally launch, <laughs> launch camera raw, and then go right up here. Rather than messing with all this stuff, just hit auto, right? So this is like, you want to start someplace, bam. And uh, rather right. than adding exposure, contest, this, that, the other thing, like, it's just good. Uh, clarity. I feel like most of the themes with Photoshop is just, it's magic. Yeah. And it's smart. Yeah, it's magic <laughs> and smart. Those are the two the two of the two keys. It's magic and it's smart. Well, that's kind of like I would say magic is a is like a level of smart. Like it's like an ex like you could be magic because you're so smart. You're so smart, you're magical. Like makes you, know what you I'm magic. Saying? So like, I'm kind of taking her hand down a little bit, but lead it, leaving some of the shading. And I'm messing with the opacity of the brush as I'm doing that. Yeah. So I started with a, a higher opacity uh, when I was on the outside. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm working my way in, I'm lowering the opacity. So I'm keeping some of that shading there so it's not all going away. Because it actually, again, gives a sense of depth when you back out of it. Then if you were to just go in there with the same opacity of brush, just take a bunch of it, it would be way too light where this mm. part of her fingers are. Yeah, that looks really good. Like It's coming together. Kind of ste stepping back, that looks, looks really good. Yeah, but this part still. Yeah, can you fix that? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I actually think it like, looks really good. Like you don't, it looks. Definitely I mean, want to take the harsh lines out of here. Um, just because it's kind of. Do you, do you have an uh, opinion on, on clarity? I guess Tim's asking about clarity in um, Camera Raw. I don't really I have, have an, an opinion. opinion on it. Like, yeah, use it. Does it, does it is it working for you? <laughs> yeah, if you don't have an opinion on it, then that's cool. Um, I don't use it often enough. I have dabbled with it. Um, but now I'm gonna go home and try it even more. Yeah. Uh, because, so I don't wanna say one thing, one thing or the other just because I haven't had enough um, experience with using it. Um, mm -hmm. I do think that most of the things in RAW are really good because it's really great to do some of that before you bring the image in. Again, these have been color corrected and kind of messed with. Um, but if yeah. you're just starting with your raw, I always shoot in raw and you bring it into Photoshop, you can do so many more things than when you actually bring it all the way in. Yeah. Um, and that was like one of the first things you're taught when you're learning even photography, but it also works for, I mean, so, and raw files really are powerful, I find, you know, just because. Yeah, 
I mean, they just have all that data that you get to play with, you know? Right. I remember when I started with, with photography and rock files, these are the worst. They've lost all the color. <laughs> They've lost Which one? when oh. I started with raw files, oh, you know, yeah. when I was starting photography. Uh -huh. I'm like, why do people use these? Oh, because you bring it all back in. <laughs> and you're able to like bring everything back in. Yeah. Okay, yeah, raw so is nice. I think they only sometimes people lean away from it because it does it does add a lot of file size. So if you're shooting in raw, like that's gonna mean a lot of like do you really need all that data? In yeah, it definitely cases. adds a lot of file size, but it's just what I always shoot in. Okay. Um, it's not to say that you can't create something with a JPEG or whatever else, because that's what a lot of you know stocks are. They're you know when you download them, um, and I work with those all the time. But it's just nice to start with that raw file when you can, just because I feel like you can. It's kind of a blank canvas almost. Yeah. It kind of gives you the ability to, you know, well, that's play what around you want. with it. Yep, totally. And you can work with JPEGs and everything else, but I think when you get a chance, if you can work with something that is raw, it's just nice to have that ability to start with a blank canvas, you know, instead of something that's already kind of been messed with or played with. Yeah, I, I agree. Which, it always annoys me. I actually have a, a, this Canon mirrorless camera, and then it has all these effects on it, and I'm like, why would I ever want to shoot with this effect? Like, I could make this, like, once, that's just kind of a yeah. issue I have. Like, why would why <laughs> this is would my you? Feeling, yeah. you know, right. No. I don't know. Anyways, no, I agree because yeah. I'm shooting with this effect. I can I can make that effect, but I can't I can't ever go back to the original image because it wasn't taken that way. Right. You know. So that was my problem with that. Well, thing. wasn't Aaron touching on when things are brought in and they're already color corrected as a stock image? So when you're playing with stock images that are color corrected, because so many stock images are color corrected, and then you're kind of starting with something that's already corrected yeah, as well, and yeah. also already a JPEG. Yeah, yeah. So it already has color information, plus it's color corrected. Yeah. So that's kind of all, you know, a lot of your work then is going to be trying to balance that those colors to reach with, what you want. Mm -hmm. So it, it's cool if you can find stock images that kind of resemble your color palette as yeah, well. Yeah, that's I true. I try to do that. Uh, when I'm finding something, I try to find something that doesn't have hard... Harsh light, it doesn't always work, but doesn't have as harsh of lighting and kind of uses similar moody tones to me. And it mm -hmm. helps those, the balancing. All right. Well, again, you know, just fixing up her hand and just making sure that the opacity is not, you know, it's strong on the front and not as strong as you go down the fingers because you want the ability to see some shading. And the shading's already there, so why not use it, you know? So you don't have to add it back in. Oh, totally. Oops, a little too harsh. Oh, I really like this song. This is a good song that's playing right now. There's <laughs> there's music playing in the background. So I sometimes <laughs> just act like I can hear it. This is a good jam. Yeah, it's good. It's a good one. This is the best one. Yeah, this is the best this one. This is the best one yet. <laughs> that's, that's, that's DJ Pac-Man. I know. I that's who's mix, mixing up the sick beats. He's oh, yeah. We call I know. Him, we call it's him a party DJ Pac-Man. He runs it. all the stuff. <laughs> He's the man. He's the man. It's the nice, okay, the uh, nice hum of alt computers. Key to, uh, uh, oh, yeah. So, th uh, oh, Alexander's just posting random tips as well. By all means, give us all your Photoshop tips. Or your, like, w I would love to know everybody's, like, favorite little trick or yeah. tip Yeah, so Photoshop. what are some of your favorite tricks that you do that helps you create? Or some things that you've figured out that you um, enjoy doing? Because there's so many different ways to do things in Photoshop, and there's so uh -huh. many different ways to create. And again, just all of us being able to come together and kind of share those tips. Yeah. I do like uh, just Alexander's tip that it, what he's talking about is this one, and I'll let you, you can kind of do your thing. Oh, okay, I don't good. mean for you to like. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, I'm going to be bringing a bird in now. So ooh, I'll go please do. Up. Anyway, so basically if you hold down the Alt key, so basically I've messed around with th things in here. You're like, oh, I messed around with it. And then right over here, I don't. Rather than me trying to reset everything back to center or anything like that, and this goes for any dialogue in 
uh, any modal dialog in Photoshop, if you hold down the Option key or Alt key, it'll change it to Reset. Did you know that? Are you talking about the hotkey? Use? Yeah, just the Option key will change that to Reset. Did you know that? And it'll reset everything back to normal. Right. Did you know that? I, I actually don't. I mean, I didn't I was, know that for I years. Actually, no, I actually don't, didn't use that, so. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I'll use it. So here I have a moon, and um, a, he was on, he was on, <laughs> the moon was on a black background, and um, I did add a glow, um, because I don't take pictures of the moon. I do use pictures of the moon that I get, and um, the, then I did add the glow, just so it was a little bit more fancy. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> and again, you know, screening it, I'm gonna put it above the sky. And it's going to need some work. So, I love the fact that you don't have oh. to click this anymore. Right? That's really Yeah, that's awesome. brand new. For any, any, anything you need to commit, you could just click anywhere, like say, on another tool and it'll automatically commit what you're working on. So you had to rasterize it in order to use it as, in, in order to use the um, lens blur here because, oh, I think that's gonna be too much. But I wanna blur it because if you've noticed, my backgrounds have a lot of blur oftentimes. So if I am adding a moon, I want it to You blend. have to rasterize it though? You do? Yeah, well, just to use the lens blur. Oh, lens blur is mm -hmm. like the only one. Okay, it's the gotcha. only one. That was too gotcha. much. Um, yeah, for some reason, the um, lens blur just doesn't allow you. If you know the answer, let me know. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's only the lens blur. Yeah, if yeah. anybody knows the answer to that, <laughs> I just know how it works. But mm -hmm. again, that might be a little too blurred. Try it again. Um, and again, I just play with the radius a little bit. But I think, you know, just trying to get it blurred enough where it looks like it's matching with the background. And then I'm going to add just another layer mask and take that box around that it creates when it blurs it. No, oh, I didn't, Alexander, I didn't know that. You, um, I'm gonna try to try that. Yeah, try Some it out because it, it's only the lens blur. Hmm. Anyway, this is how it's starting to look. It's looking good. So you know, and then I, like I will take the opacity down a little bit as well. I just wanted to look like a natural um, thing happening there. Um, I think it's time for the bird. Let's drop in the little, little birdie. And this is a stock image as well. Oh yeah. Talented stock image. I hope that yeah. bird doesn't notice her. <laughs> Look at my wings. You know, but <laughs> that like, fly. that bird's like, I'm gonna come, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it can turn <laughs> ugly if that bird's like hungry, I don't know. No, definitely. Okay, let's see. Oh, I'm gonna use your, your select subject that you're showing me yesterday. Let's see what it does. Oh yeah. There we go, it's pretty, close. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Wow. Especially because of the clear background. Yeah. You know, that helps a lot. Another another one that will work any uh, because you shoot with uh, you know a fixed lens you get some blur back there like there's focus area select as well. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I do tend to shoot like that. But I I feel like it gives a little dreaminess to it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I go a little higher, but most of the time, I just like the the subject to be or the focus to be on the subject. And you can actually blur with lens blur the whole background on stock images you're using to kind of give that effect. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if like you're using a background with stock or if I got a shot but I wanted it more blurred, I use the lens blur to kind of um, make that look from a lens. Yeah, I'm really into that. Um, and that really helps a lot. I feel like I'm just right here on the screen. <laughs> you are like... on top of it. <laughs> it's just everything looks so tiny. <laughs> there we go. Uh, oops. 
So it's already looking pretty good just from the fact that, I'm gonna actually go back real quick. What are you looking at? Well, I was I was gonna pull up an example of the uh, the lens blur, like. Oh yeah, so no, that's, that's really I'm... powerful. I am all about the lens blur. I use lens blur most of the time with everything I do that okay. I blur. I just I feel like it gives a really natural look. Nice. I like actually all the new blurs. Like the so there's lens blurs, but for, as for the like the new blurs, um, tilt shift. Tilt shift is motion good. blur. Um, oh no, I use the motion blur with um, wings are really cool. good. So you can separate the wings, add a motion blur, put them back on the. So I could do that even with this just to show. But you could, you could take it out, just cut off the wings, mm -hmm. add a motion blur as it's on the other layer, then move it down back onto the layer okay. so it matches back up with the bird and it kind of gives that feeling of movement. Yeah, that's and. Cool. Um, his <laughs> movement, <laughs> but it does. <laughs> it gives that feeling of movement, um, and it makes it again just look a little bit more realistic. And so, if I have a couple birds, I might do a motion blur on the wings of one of the birds, but not the other bird, just because maybe one of the birds was exactly in focus mid yeah. flap, okay. and the other one wasn't, and that kind of gives another feeling. So motion, yeah, motion blur would probably be the second most used blur for me. Okay, nice. I use it if I'm doing butterflies or something, I'll just motion blur the entire butterfly. You don't have to worry about separating the wings because the body's so small. Okay, yeah, that's <laughs> So like true. insects and things can just be entire, you know, entirely motion blurred. All right, so I think this is better. Select mask this. It's coming together. It's only a tiny bit of green. And the feet are cut out nicely. that radius up. I'm actually, it's looking really nice already. Oh, I, it's looking really nice. I'm not even gonna and it set kinda it to like layer. depends on how how big or small it's gonna be. Kind of determines how, how how detailed you really need to get with it, huh? And That's like very true. Um, if it's going to be a giant bird on your scene. You should probably like make sure every hair is out. That's where uh, the the Wacom tablet and like different tablets can help, because you can get in there and do little hairs yeah. and things like that. Especially if you're working with animals a lot, animals tend to be just like a little bit of an accent to my photos a lot of times. Not really the main subject. I'm flipping that bird that way, and see the light coming in you on the bird. Flip the bird. So yes. You just flip the so the light it's looks a little odd, the right? The light's hitting her, and then. Um, oh, I kind of wanted the bird to be like really big and scary. Oh, really? No, you, you want to be her to be nervous? <laughs> no. I can't find my carriage. And Everything's this, a pumpkin, and there's this giant killer bird. Yeah, you know, just a day. This in isn't the life a fairy or, tale. This is a nightmare. I know, right? <laughs> I thought I was a princess, and I'm just. I like, thought I was a princess, but I'm just being alive. attacked. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the size really does make a difference because look at how far away that guy is. Again, he's going to have to be, but look at how well the subject did. Selected the subject. Oh, man. Yep. It's so good. There's just a little bit of green right here. Again, going to add the some, I'm going to add some blur to the bird. I always do with my stocks because if you see my images, they're a little bit dreamy, a little bit blurred, a little bit um, mm -hmm. grainy, just, um, you know, I she was my Mark IV, um, my Canon Mark IV, and um, I just I just always tend to do that with those lenses that are prime. So it's how my lenses turn out. I mean, how my photos turn out. My lenses. Where am I? <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> but yeah. So again, already looking really good, but just not quite blended. And um, first thing first is just take the opacity down. 90% already looking more blended. Totally. Into yep. the scene. Now she has something to look at. She's not just like staring mm -hmm. up into space. She's like, oh, there's this bird there. And then um, I'll detail a little bit, but I also use a fog, I used a fog brush down here. If you guys want to see it, um, fog brushes are really cool too. 
they can just add a little bit of atmosphere uh, to your images. So I'll do that really quick. But yeah, I mean. And is this one on your Instagram? Yeah, this one's on there. Sweet. I'm gonna go find the fog I was using. And this is always, so I guess a couple things to think about, like if the bird is clear, it's within that focal point of that, of yeah. the fur. Mm -hmm. If you wanted it to be further back, you know, obviously it would have a, a It would have a big, it. and and it's still going to have a slight blur. Okay. Just because it's a little too sharp for yeah, where she is I agree. even. And um, so it's still gonna have a slight blur, and then I'm gonna blur first and then grain, because if you do it the opposite, you'll lose the grain. Yeah. So, just a little bit of, I don't know, you guys probably already know that, but just thought I'd throw it out there. All right. Let's see how this one looks. So see how this is kind of weird and blocky right there? But the fog is pretty cool. So now you can warp it and uh, kind of pull it along. Yeah, warp. I know, yeah, you. I mean, you. this is, it's always, again, that's why I like these, having different guests in. I'm, you know, learning so much. Like, I don't use this warp that much, but I should be, because it's, like, you've been able to use it so effectively. I love it. You get stuck on, I feel like you become really close with some tools on here yeah. as an artist. Just whatever ones work for your space. You're just, I'm really attached to this now. Um, here's just a rough, I mean, I might warp it a little bit more, but I'm also going to put it on top of her, right? Because, and then the opacity down, kind of mess with that a little bit, but it's just adding a little bit of atmosphere, mm -hmm. right? And it was one brushstroke of fog. Yeah but you can then warp it and make it your own. Very cool. Um, so that's already coming together and... And that helps kind of solidify her in the scene more too. I think that's an added element that kind I of I think so makes too. Her... Um, I think that it adds her to the whole element, right? Like it just, it just makes it seem, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So... Adding, Nathan says, adding, adding grain is the new black. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> True. I didn't realize till I started talking about grain how much I talk about grain. I mean, yeah. I didn't realize how important it was till right now. So I'm learning this with all of you. Yeah, I'm <laughs> into it. Um, yeah, so her hands coming together, all of that. The bird's gonna need a little bit of work. Um, let me see. We have entries to show. Oh yeah. Two. Are but we doing that gonna, now? Yeah, I think we. I think we'll dive into that. But yeah, because like, we're because we're this is actually looking really good. Like we're maybe finalize it somehow. But yeah, looks, I mean, there's. Like a, I was gonna add a two little mice. Oh yeah, we gotta add the mice. Just because they're, they're stock images too, and I think you know it's good for people who are using stock. Mm -hmm. You know, it's to see how I color correct them and add them into the scene. All right. I want to see these. Yes, this is fun. So just to. Recap where everything is. This challenge tab, uh, creating a little dream design challenge, and just went to Woo Box. You can check these out for yourself, but uh, we want to get your opinion too and kind of like your help. We're in View Gallery. Yeah. And we'll kind of dive into this. I know you saw this yeah. one. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. Hmm. That's how Who he's submitted feeling. that one. <laughs> Paco. <laughs> oh, you kid. Uh, all right, here we go. Anels. Oh, what is happening cool. right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm not it's sure. It's very that's, abstract. Yeah, it's kind of, oh, is that, are those, like, what's, is that, are they? The leaves. Okay, leaves? I got, I got that part, but like, what's, is there? That looks like some. What else is in here? Not quite sure. Is there some are, double are exposure lips? going on? I think there's double exposure, which again, it's leaving it open to imagination, I guess. But yeah, yeah imagination cool. is a wild place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I main Jadidi. This looks pretty good, huh? That's uh. 
It does because I see that she did her focal point or the, the focal points the background. Um, so making the subject in the foreground blurred would make sense. Mm -hmm. really that's how like a camera it. would work. Yeah. So. That is a great one. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Who doesn't love that movie? It's so good. Is that the, the big friendly giant? The big friendly giant. The FG. <laughs> Very cool, Cal. Great job. I love it. It's magical. That's what I, I first noticed that one. There's something about a giant animal that just draws you in immediately. Mm. You're like this is. It's one of those things where I just talked about earlier, where your head, your space, where you see things, and we see things as human. We go, oh, that's not right. But this is this is not right in an awesome way. Yeah. A giant animal just draws your eyes mm -hmm. in, and it's immediately yeah beautiful totally. to look at. And then she got all the. See all the detail in the hair. Yeah. Uh, what do you got think? All of that. Of like making this match, though. Like any 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 pointers for the. Yeah. Um. So, the polar bear and the kid seem to be on the same area in the same area. Yet the kid is much more blurred than the polar bear. So if you can't, if you're in a situation where you can't make the kid, you can make the kid a little bit sharper. Mm -hmm. But I think also the polar bear needs to be a little bit more blurred. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. because they're on the same level, if you wanted to pull the polar bear forward mm -hmm. and have the kid further in the background, that would make it seem a lot more um, blended and uh, realistic. Yeah, that's true. So if you can't, if you're finding that it's difficult to make the kid sharp, um, just pull the kid back a little bit, make him a little bit smaller, and then the polar bear will seem like it's closer. And then work on, uh, it's kind of like the brightness. It's almost oh, too yeah. bright as well. So take Well, you could do the opacity there too. Try that out. Yeah. And also a burn tool could maybe, but it's maybe. a little white though, so it probably won't work very well. Yeah, definitely knock this down. And uh, so Aaron Nace did this this morning, so you could just reference that video, and he do he does that very same thing with his, so that's the best, best thing to do. But yeah, he was showing really cool stuff. Yeah. Always, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're over it. We get it. We get it. You're good, Aaron. We're o we get it. Ryan, Ryan's very cool. That is oh, cool. Oh, look at all these little Patronuses out there. Yes. No. <laughs> That's all I see when I see a stag now. Oh, right. I'm just like, I only see a Patronus. Mm. I do not see anything else. That's awesome. <laughs> I love this moon. That moon is awesome. Yeah. I love a red cool. moon. <laughs> These almost look like graphics, though. That's my only suggestion. Yeah, so the deer in the foreground looks really realistic, and you almost don't even need the other two. But if you wanted yeah. to do the other two, I think they should have the same realism. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going for a surrealism and not really trying to do that, then maybe they would all be like those other two. Yeah. But having the two different types is, um, I think, just... It's you. It's more noticeable, right? Mm -hmm. Like which which side? But really awesome. I mm -hmm. love the moon and the guy in front is so cool, staring right at the camera. Right. Like, yeah. What's up? exactly? I like it's like kind of <laughs> hiding in there. And... Yeah. Ah, oh, Timas. This is a. Uh... Oh yeah, this is that new that new group's that group's new album, Rebirth. Doesn't it look like an album cover? It does. Of an angsty alt band or something. Angsty. Right. It's like, oh. cool. I like colors. I first was like, wait, what is it? Oh, look at this. Oh, all these exposures. First of all, this is scaring me. <laughs> now that I look at it a little closer. Something Are they is handing happening. him popsicles? <laughs> in a very sharp movement. Is that candy? <laughs> Please tell me that's candy. <laughs> Chandler, good job though. Oh, well Ryan composited. Ford. Ryan Ford said those are the layers. I accidentally have flattened and didn't save as my object. So it was, a, it was oh. an accident. Wow. <laughs> oh no. I feel for you. Okay, man. so you I get it then you. already. Yeah, yeah, that happens to us all. This one is intense, but great job compositing. Everything like just works brilliant. Yeah, it all like falls into there, definitely shooting in that same spot. Mm -hmm. A bunch of different shots and putting those together. Cool. Good little baby. Mm -hmm. So I only here would just be uh, maybe, how cute. 
the uh, con the contrast a little bit on the. Why can't it I looks like it's name? just Dreamcatcher. And um, what did you say? It looks like it's just colorized like red or something. Does it kind of seem that way to you? Yeah, I think. Um, again, I keep talking about the opacity, but I think it might help a little bit, and also lowering the contrast, maybe like yeah. working on a little bit in curves just so it matches the softness of the baby's face a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> so cute. A little cute. rainbow under the arm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little rainbow. Huh. That's very nice. Amon, good job. Another one from oh, Amon as well. Oh, that's cool. It almost looks like a painting. Mm-hmm. It almost looks like a painting. I love how the horses very are cool. kind of clouds. Yeah, filled in. And the colors are really pretty. Yeah, the colors are pretty. Soft palette. Yeah. Garland. Look at that. Dancing in the Universe. By Saturn. <laughs> I think that's Saturn. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Very cool. Abstract. Yeah. Good job. There's some smoke down there. Good job cutting this out. Like I don't I could imagine this might might have been a shot where she was on white or something. Mm -hmm. Um but good job cutting it out. Um, I don't know what this is, but yeah, it's awesome. Oh, pretty. No vans. I love how the subject is um, really the centerpiece here. You know, the background's a little bit more simple, and she's just really the subject in the center. Mm -hmm. And there was even a blur, like a little motion blur mm -hmm. going on on the bird to make it just seem, you feel like it's moving. Yeah, you totally do. And... It looks, I don't know, maybe she has a little, which is good. There's a and little bit of And she did the shading under the, um, under the dress. Yeah, that's, this is a really good one. I'm into it. Into it. No vans. Great Colors job. are pretty, too. I love blue, so <laughs> I'm always drawn to the blue mood. Yeah, into it. Good, yeah, those nice complimentary colors. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> That is fun. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't think you should hang out with him. I don't think he feels like a <laughs> good, a good influence, influence on you, Chandler. But perfect, because he's looking right at him, like right, right there. So that's yeah, it's good. Daniel. Oh, there we go. I couldn't see the bottom. It's hard to like. I assume. Like, was this composited? I, I assume. Yeah, this is. one is just kind of like, was it taken or was it mm -hmm. composited? But it looks like the sky was. If you go up, it's kind okay. of where the tree line is. Okay. And um, so here's the deal with um, the only thing I would say, it's really cool, is that there's light hitting her back, but then there's also light hitting the front. So it looks like oh, the light's coming from two different places. That's so true. So I, okay. again, what I was just talking about is just sometimes when you we look at something and we go, okay, wait, that light's not coming from the same direction, yeah. can make a big difference. So even a different tree line mm -hmm. that doesn't have the light. Good call. Then the light can continue. Because it probably took, you know, the subject, maybe they took the picture of the subject or maybe they had that. So it might be easier to kind of fix the lighting in the tree line Yeah. than it is to do the lighting on her. Yeah, good call, good call. <laughs> All right, an else? Giant Sweet. shadow. That's, I like, like the perspective the of the shadow. It's like going backwards. Makes it feel really big. Mm -hmm. That is cool. I Got might say that grain. the tree maybe doesn't add too much to the image. <laughs> yeah. And it's it might be a little too silhouetted. But it looks really awesome. It, yeah. I think the tree just takes a little bit away from the sh from the shadow, because the shadow is a subject. Yeah. So yeah. either way, or if you want to keep the tree and you really love it, maybe just a little bit lower on the opacity just to make it kind of match the sh shadow a little bit more. Yeah. And it would just be like maybe two seconds. Yeah. Good call, because again, it's like sort of like leading your eye. You have two things fighting for your attention. So like, what's the primary element and the secondary element? Right. And just making sure that those blacks match. Mm-hmm. Making sure those blacks match. Good, good, good. You can use that oh. color select too to even make sure that the colors are matching, or like the the color when you're selecting different colors. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's scary. I'll go get this album. He's oh, gonna I have that. He's these. gonna have that picture in his nightmares. I know. I'm like, wait, this. 
Uh, remind me to not mess with Chandler I, at all. I hey, I think it's really cool. I like the imagination. Halloween's my favorite time of year, so mm-hmm. creepy's cool with me. <laughs> <laughs> They're candy bars. They're candy bars. Giving them candy bars really <laughs> with a really swift motion. Right. Yeah, Anel's her first composite in a while. And oh, that's which one was that total one? goal. Hers was the last one. Yeah. But that's the whole goal is but just to get thing. involved and do But that's why I really love it because I love how she played with the perspective. And I just really, I mean, the shadow wasn't just standing there. It was like, I'm going to put that perspective backwards and kind of make you feel like you're going into a story. Mm-hmm. So I really love that. That's very cool. Yeah. But that's the thing, you just try things. I like this one. I just try random things all the time. Just, yeah. well, sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it does, or sometimes I just fix certain parts of it. And there's no problem because I think as long as you're trying and doing something, then mm-hmm. you're headed somewhere. You know what I just noticed about this one though, by the way, it's like this, she does kind of have a green tint, which kind of makes her work with the whole thing, right? No, totally. Like in the environment. Hmm. Very cool. And then her name. Garland Green. Garland Green goes with the name. Oh, yes. Perfect. Into it. Uh, Let me check time. We have about uh, probably less than five minutes. Maybe we have time to add the mice or not. You tell you tell us. Um, I mean, I can get get them started. They're basically going to be very similar to what I did with the bird. Okay. Um, I can kind of show, if I can actually show the final image that I did. Oh, yeah. Can, that that would be just a quick run through. Oh, good. It's and then we PSD. can say we did it. That's so all you needed this. to so, do. You're too honest. We could have just, you could just opened it while we we're still on my screen. Oh, yeah, I did this while I was <laughs> looking at the other. <laughs> oh, there um, they are. So if you look at the difference right here, you're going to notice immediately. I'm going to not save these guys. I'm not saving them. It's on purpose. Okay. So obviously, um, the colors were not correct here. Um, so I corrected all these colors. And then um, here's the little mice. Those are cute. Shading, worked on the grain and the blur on the, oh, I did blur the wings on this guy. Oh, that's nice. And um, this right here. There's worked Gus on Gus. That. One of those is Gus Gus, maybe. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And done. And worked on colors and curves. You are so good. <laughs> yes, correct him. Uh, tomorrow's the last day. Tomorrow's the day where we're like, we're excited and then we get a little sad after a while because it's like the last day. Mm-hmm. All right? Yeah. Like toward the end of it, we'll be like, and we'll be like, don't leave. Alexandria, stay with us. But uh, I, I'm glad these are all actually being recorded as well. So they're all on the replays tab. Yeah. And it's cool peeking behind the scenes and taking a look at your work, you know, that you you see, you know, again, as part of your Instagram and like, wow, how how did you put this together? You know, how, how was this put together in a similar fashion? You know, yeah. this one, for instance, you know what I'm saying? So. So anyways. Well, thanks for having me today. Cool. Of course. Thank you for hanging out with us. That's one big flower. <laughs> Into it. <laughs> Into it. Into it. So, uh, Galed says very cool work. Thank I agree. you. We Thanks. appreciate that. That is really cool work. We like having you here. So I like being here. Please <laughs> come back tomorrow. This is fun. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Follow her on Instagram and all the social media, wherever you are. It's mainly Instagram, though. When you say, I yeah, mainly, like, yeah, okay. very cool. All right, it's well, like it, it takes a lot of time to do so, social media. So yeah, I mean, you're <laughs> you're you're a mom, you're a wife, you you have things to do. I get it. So we just appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule and hanging out with us. Yeah, good for us. So that's fantastic. Uh, join us tomorrow morning. We have uh, Aaron Nace from Flurn kicking it off. Yes. Ted Chin's going to be in the house again tomorrow, <laughs> day three. And we'll do portfolio reviews tomorrow. So submit those, get those prepped for tomorrow, and we'll review those tomorrow as well. I can't wait to see. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. Yeah. All right. All right. See you tomorrow, guys. Thank you.